This is the false self. And as a reminder, what we're doing is challenging everybody to do what's called the Rise Up Challenge. Wake up, carve out the time, let the universe and the person in the mirror know that you mean business by waking up earlier. It's a great way to start the day. Um, in, get away from your phone and immediately read something enriching and forward moving and positive, right? Claim control of your mind before your thoughts boot up from yesterday. Um, and after you read journal, today I'm sharing my journal entry. You know, how many of these do I have? Thousands. So I'll be publishing books upon books upon books with my rise ups coming out soon after the, the next book. Um, so and after you journal, exercise. This is so crucial. That's, that's your Prozac. That's your medication to just clear out your mind. And after that, everything seems great. I promise you. I promise you, you're going to think foolishly that everything is great. And then go get cleaned up. I put on a shirt for you, button down today. And then if you're so inclined and you want to use it, 7.30 a.m. Eastern every day, Monday through Friday, you can check in with this little rise up and claim control of your day, become the dominant force of your day. So this is the false self. Um, and one quick thought before that kind of stimulated is I was just thinking about belief. Belief is a sticky thing. We all hide behind our beliefs. Beliefs are so important to us. I believe, right? As a matter of fact, a lot of us think that if we don't believe in something, we can't do it. That's interesting. And uh, one thing I said this morning is, is you don't have to know before you go. What's interesting about that is if you go, you'll end up knowing. Going is what stimulates knowing, right? So anyway, that's a belief system that you have to know everything before you go. So belief's a sticky thing. If you think about it, belief is just our way of saying that we've taken something that we don't concretely know and concretized it. That's what belief is. And we've been raised to think that we have to believe. God, think about that. So if you can let go of your need to know everything and just stay alert and conscious like you would if you were walking around a room and the lights were completely off. You couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. Think about how alert and alive you would be and conscious you would be to be able to maneuver around that room. Just go about your day like that, but let go of needing to know. Because if you're in that dark room, you won't know anything. You'll just be alert and alive. Stop trying to know today and just explore. Break the insanity of the oscillation in your life. Don't do the same thing that you did last year and expect different results. Right now in this world, awakening and becoming more conscious is no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. It's not a good idea to not be, be conscious and awake right now and just go with the flow because the riptides of life will carry you out to sea right now. So get involved in your life. Take radical responsibility. Hey, Susie, great morning. All right. So as you can tell, I like to talk about this stuff. And remember that the podcast versions, I just read it without all the live stuff and the fluff. Um, so people really appreciate that, except for when I do the long interviews. So the false self, have you ever woke up with a racing mind, right? Throw it in the comments. Um, if you've ever, if you're listening with me live right now, have you ever woke up in the morning or in the middle of the night with a racing mind, right? And everybody has their different version of what that means. Well, I did this morning and I'm going to share with you. This is my journal entry. I did. I woke up this morning with a racing mind and it felt like a stampede of thoughts in my head. And I noticed that all those thoughts were highlighting all the stresses and worries from yesterday and the day ahead. So I was like focused on the past and the future and all these thoughts were running through my head. Now, when you're unconscious and you first wake up, it's hard to re recognize the difference between just thoughts. It's very easy to be coerced into thinking that those thoughts that you're thinking are reality. That's why you have to stop yourself. I mean, you, you go back and listen to my other episodes on the evolution of gratitude, you know, put a pause on that boot up before it you know, takes control of your day. So I made a conscious observation because I practice this stuff all the time. I made a conscious observation that 99% of these thoughts. So I said, Hmm, that's how I stopped it. I paused it. Great morning to everybody coming in. Um, I paused it, right? 
And I made an uh, unconscious observation that 99% of those things that I was thinking about didn't matter. I, I checked. I said, does that matter? These 3,000 thoughts that I was kept collecting, does it matter? And more importantly, I identified that I had little to no control over them. Imagine if you could do that whenever you had thoughts and feelings that were associated with something. If you could delineate that they don't matter and you have no control over them, that gives you permission to release them as just thoughts. Step aside and say, oh yeah, well, those thoughts are happening just like the chaos in the world, but it doesn't mean anything for me today. I still have the potential to be great. So I felt the stress, right? That's important to understand too. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel the stress. So I felt the stress as my brain booted up, right? So that's important. Um, and I realized that if I allowed um, any of those thoughts to connect with my reality, if I allowed those thoughts to determine and connect and predict my reality, um, I'm going to post judgment and label the day as a result of that as tough and challenging. So if you woke up this morning and you said, oh, this day is going to suck, that's what happened. You booted up all these thoughts and you allowed those thoughts to connect with your reality. You're, you didn't decide to walk around the dark room and just be alert and alive and recognize that you have as much or more potential today than ever before. So all because you collected some of those thoughts and bought into them as things. We've even been taught that thoughts are things. So whenever you have a thought, you make it a thing rather than just say it's a thought. In Buddhism, whenever they, you have that, that mind stampede, they tell you to practice just saying thinking. You say the word thinking. And what that means is you're just recognizing, oh, that's my brain doing what it does. That's how you can look at society. That's, that's society doing what it does. Our mind is like a pond of water. I love this. Our mind is like a pond, pond of water. Anything that we think or do will stir up the water and create ripples and potentially waves. So you can't smooth out the pond and make it be still, right? Can you? I mean, think about it. Can you take your hand and smooth out a pond? No. So anything that we think or do will stir up more ripples. So the pond only becomes still when we have let go of all effort and striving to process our thoughts. Think about this rather than observe them as just thoughts. So if we're taking, if we're making the effort to process our thoughts, that's what's creating ripples. But if you want to create stillness in your pond, you have to release from the effort of trying to observe the thoughts rather than just observe them as something that's happening regardless of, of your reality. You have to be able to step outside your mind and say, my mind is always going to do what it does, but it doesn't mean that my reality has to be connected to it. That's how you still the pond. So, I hope you're getting this. I, I, I love this idea. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to walk around in the dark and I'm going to create stillness in my pond. So it is the mind, your mind, that chooses to strive and access its thoughts on its own. So all those thoughts are happening, but it's you and your mind that chooses to process those thoughts without you. So that's happening with or without you. So by looking at your mind as a separate entity from yourself, you can allow it to do what it does without giving its thoughts any ripples, meaning affecting you and, uh, and then creating value and defining your reality, right? You could just step aside and look at them. So the goal is to step away from your normal way of thinking. So I'm going to encourage you to be abnormal today. Step away from your normal way of thinking and become aware of your true self. There's a difference between your true self and your false self. That's the gift today. Practice um, becoming aware of your awareness. Think about that. Can you become aware <clears throat> of your awareness? Conscious of your consciousness. When you practice this, you'll eventually observe the movements of your mind. And that's your false self. When you step aside and you can observe as a separate entity the movements of your mind, which is happening no matter what, you can't control it, 
that's your false self. It's not you. That's your false self. So to experience the calm in your life, if you're into that sort of thing, it's about giving up your attachment to the movements of your mind. It's referenced as entering a don't know mind. I don't know. Say that to somebody today, you know, because remember what I said about beliefs. That's your, uh, that's your feeble effort, you know, or attempt at taking something that you don't have concrete evidence over and concretizing it. It's the same thing when a, a lot of things you just, you just don't know. And it's okay. Let go of the need to know today. Say it's a don't know mind and it's wonderful. Socrates was famous for this quote. He says, I only know one thing, and that is that I don't know. Imagine if you could get to the place where you could admit that, right? Rather than trying to know. Oh, I love that. So this is the gateway to the enlightened state that I call the calm. Wait, be still in meditation. Meditation is a wonderful thing to do. Release from the things like hope and thought as they are attached typically to the things caught in your conditioned mind. Try to, try to marinate on that for a second because I know how important hope is, right? But do you understand how hope and thought are connected to your conditioned mind very often, right? Oh, interesting one, right? We went a little deep today. So does that make sense to you? I'd love to get your feedback. I love, 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 love. I see uh, Risa says that she's abnormal every day. We know that growth takes place outside the comfort zone. So that's a good idea. That's what it means to be extraordinary. If you do the same thing in 2023 and you're getting ready to do that, that you did in 2022 that didn't work, that's called normal, right? Abnormal or, or ordinary, abnormal or extraordinary would be you doing something different today, including stepping away from buying into all of your thoughts, including doing the hard stuff today that you know you need to do, but you think you can wait to do. That's how you can be abnormal and extraordinary. And that's how you get to the top of the mountain. Very few people put the work in to do that. And now's your time. You have this amazing opportunity. I help a lot of people break through. My philosophy is start with your physical. Lead from the front in your life. Take radical responsibility of your physical health, your fueling, your exercise. That's what, that's what this whole Rise Up Challenge is all about, right? Your mind sits on your body. On a healthy body rests a healthy mind. Take control of your body first and allow your mind to follow suit. And then after that, things like money and success – of course you can do it. You'll be the right person for the job. But if you skip those first two steps and you go for the money and success, well, you're not the right person for the job, right? You just think you are. So love and appreciate you all. And uh, I love this one. So um, remember, Rise Up With Dragon Facebook community. That's where these all live. We have a, our Rise Up With Dragon um, website. Go there. You get involved in our, our newsletter. A lot of free, cool stuff happening. We're about to launch a member's um, site. Um, the book is coming out. Uh, I'm, I'm writing a book about my Amazon experience. And uh, also we have the, the Rise Up you know, daily affirmations coming as well. So love and appreciate you. Hope this stuff makes sense to you. Please consider sharing it. If you learned something today, give it away. That's how it's going to stay. Um, and I just challenge you to follow the Rise Up Challenge and uh, give me some feedback. Love and appreciate you. Have a great day.